Welcome to the Worthy House. I am Charles Haywood, the maximum leader of the Worthy House, and I am here to give you back your future. At the Worthy House, we offer reality-focused writings on a variety of topics, often on history, politics, and, in general, on human flourishing in the coming post-liberal West. Written versions of all Worthy House writings are available at our main site, theworthyhouse.com. Today we are discussing the year's best science fiction, 33rd Annual Collection, edited by Gardner de Zois. I have read all of the de Zois annual collections, and this one, the 33rd, is the best. I applaud de Zois's bold ability to collect stories that, whatever their merits as literature or entertainment, truly show a path forward. A path forward from historical oppression of women, of those of color, of gender non-binaries, and of the sexually fluid and or non-conforming, and towards the world of LGBTQ QIP2SAA unshackling, with total autonomic self-actualization free of bigotry and hatred. So rather than boring the reader of this review with plot summaries, since plot, after all, doesn't matter when pursuing social justice, I'll instead note the individual areas where de Zoyce's story choices succeed so well. It does surprise me de Zoyce took this path. In today's world, to challenge the dominant structures of patriarchy and heteronormativity, especially in the corporate publishing world, is to court not just rejection, but utter ruin. What a risk de Zoyce took with Zerst's career and Zerst's social acceptance by taking the bold stances Z did. I'm not sure why Z took this chance. Perhaps Z has recognized the inevitable Socolian dialectic of hetero, homo, and resultant metonymy, but we're all the richer for it. Anyway, on to a few of the individual areas of this collection's stunning success. Deconstructing gender conformity. De Zoistro says that in the future, everyone will be anything but cisgender. We all know that so-called human biology is just a stupid construct. These stories make sure the reader knows, the authors know, that we know how important it is to know that. Fighting Heteronormativity While this is the area in which perhaps the most progress has been made in today's world, de Zoyce hammers the point home by making sure that we can all envision a future where nearly everybody is non-heteronormative. Yes, there are a few stories where offensive heteronormative activities appear where individuals actually marry and have children, and no LGBTQ QIP2SA characters appear at all. But mostly, total individualism is shown by total conformity to an ethic of non-heteronormativity. And the authors are narrowly constrained by their own universes. While some people might say that the spacefaring yet ultra-traditional Chinese society, depicted in The Citadel of Weeping Pearls, wouldn't allow the daughter of the Empress to marry a woman, we know better. Or rather, we know that to depict heteronormativity is the essence of hate, so we see that, viewed through the lens of social awareness, there can be no actual contradiction between such a story structure and the elements contained in it. Power to Women The selections in this book show us why we should ignore the haters and cisgender bigots who distract us with their irrelevant arguments such as that no society in human history has ever been a matriarchy. In the fight against the patriarchy, we know reality is merely a projection of false consciousness. Recognizing this, many of these stories show a world where all leaders are women, and most societies depicted are matriarchal, formally or informally. For example, in one story, all men of course take the name of the woman who is dominant over them. Given the total lack of power women hold in today's society, Choosing stories with this stance is particularly far-seeing. Calling out bigots and haters. The authors represented here, with heroic insight and originality, directly point out that the future is certain to be dreadful for anyone who retains so-called traditional values. For example, more than one story specifically calls out the redneck bigots who universally populate Texas, casting them as refugees in a future dystopia thus showing how their current false veneer of hard work and authenticity is merely a sham. Not flinching from atheism. We all know that in the future the chains of religion will have fallen from humankind. 
Sure, bigots tell us that the religious impulse is part of a fictional human nature. Fortunately, though, the visionary authors in this collection never fall for that trap, and show us what the future will really look like, total freedom from religion. Saving the Earth The stories here focus not on silly, original futures, but rather, with laser-like intensity, on the future we all know is inevitable, given Republican, conservative, fascist, corporate greed. There is no doubt that a combination of pollution and global warming will result in disaster, and every story in this collection that imagines a dystopia rightly only considers those as the causes. Yes, the narrow-minded might criticize this as a conformist, herd-like view totally lacking in creativity, but those bigoted haters will get theirs in the future. We know that because of the stories in this book. I will admit, the stories do vary in their degree of commitment to social justice. Some place it at the forefront, others less so. But rare is a story that does not show that it, and its author, is committed. And for that, we should all be grateful.